let's welcome uh, our Senator, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, to the Chris Salcedo Show. Sir, welcome back. Chris, good morning. Good to be with you. Tons of things to get in touch with you about today. And the first thing I want to talk about is later today, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, is about ready to articulate what we're going to do about this Paris Climate Accord. What do you think he should do? Well, the early reports are that, that the president is going to withdraw America from the, the Paris Climate Agreement. And, and if that's true, I think that's terrific. I think that's exactly what he should do. It, it is what I have been urging President Trump to do for some time. Uh, and I think if, if we pull out of the agreement, it will be a very, very good thing for jobs in America and especially for the state of Texas. Uh, you know, there was a recent study by the National Economic Research, Research Association and, and they concluded that the Paris Agreement could obliterate $3 trillion of GDP and 6.5 million industrial sector jobs, which, which meet, works out to $7,000 in per capita household income that would disappear from the American economy by 2040. That's a big hit on working men and women. And, and it would have in particular a punitive effect on the state of Texas. If you look at industries like the cement industry, production is project, projected to decrease by 21%. Iron and steel decreasing by 19%. Petroleum refining decreasing by 11%. That, that is a really punitive impact on the American economy. And, and all for no purpose. This agreement would not help the environment in any meaningful way, in, in large part because major companies are exempted. Russia's given a pass. China's given a pass. India's given a pass. So all of the burden is put on America, or the bulk of the burden is put on America. It, it would decimate American jobs. And so I think President Trump is exactly right to pull America out of it and, and to defend the jobs of working men and women in our country. Yeah, you know, I, I would be in favor of it if every other country was was subject to the same punitive uh punishment that the united states has been put under on this under this climate uh, agreement but the way mr obama had worked it all out is that all the pain was suffered by the american taxpayer and by the american economy and all these other despotic regimes and might i add the world's number one co2 emitter china was exempted and and nobody under, understood why mr obama and the democrat party would would favor such an unfair uh, agreement. Let's move on to uh, health care reform if we can, Senator. There's a debate here on the Chris Salcedo Show, and I'm dying to figure out what you think about this. Because th there's the jury is out as to whether or not the Senate's going to do anything on, on health care reform as it is right. getting rid of Obamacare and, and getting something else in there. Many are observing that maybe that the Senate should just let it go and let Obamacare do what it was designed to do and give the country a lesson in what it means to electing a Democrat because Obamacare will harm this country. What do you think about that? Well, listen, Obamacare has already caused enormous harm in this country. Uh, it's the single biggest job killer in America. Uh, it is hammering small businesses. Millions of Americans have lost their jobs, have been forced into part-time work have lost their health insurance, have, have lost their doctors, and have seen their premiums skyrocket. Um, I think we have got to repeal Obamacare. I, I, I think, it, in my view, failure is not an option. Republicans have spent the last seven years campaigning all over the country, saying if only you elect us, we'll repeal Obamacare. I, I think we'll look like laughingstocks if we don't deliver on it. And, and Chris, it's, it's not easy to get done. We have a very, very narrow majority in the Senate, but I believe we can accomplish the task. And, and, and right now, I'm spending literally every waking moment trying to bring together Republicans, trying to unite the Republican conference so that we can focus on two things. Number one, honoring our promise to repeal Obamacare, but, but number two, critically, lowering health insurance premiums. The, the biggest reason so many millions of Americans are unhappy with Obamacare is it's caused premiums to skyrocket. The average family's premiums have increased over $5,000 a year. That's what I hear all across the state of Texas is Texans telling me I can't afford health insurance anymore. And if we lower premiums so that individual consumers have more choices, more options, more competition, lower premiums, and, and quality health care is more affordable, that's going to help struggling families in the state of Texas. I think that's what we need to do. 
Well, you know, you, you bring up the, the, by the way, everybody, Senator Ted Cruz, our guest right now here on the Chris Salcedo Show, uh, you, you say that you are working very hard to unite this Republican caucus in this endeavor. And I think you're right. They will look silly if they don't repeal and, and, yeah. uh, and replace o- Obamacare. But I get a sense that there are some in the Republican caucus, in particular in the Republican Senate, uh, Senator, that, that, that basically have accepted the Democrats' premise that we need a massive government-centered entitlement here. And to the conservative that's an affront, but many of these Republicans have that position, just like the Democrats. Yeah, look, it, it, Obamacare has done a lot of damage, and, and, and some Republicans are willing to accept uh, a, a massive government machinery and a, and a permanent entitlement and massive spending and government control uh, of the health care system. I, I think that's a mistake, uh, and I think it's going to take a lot of work uh, to, to bring the conference together, you know, you know, Chris, I think many times process dictates results. If you look at the first repeal bill in the House, uh, it didn't go well. It, 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 it crashed and burned because it didn't have the votes. And the reason was that it was drafted behind closed doors with, with, with really no input from anybody. Uh, in the Senate, we wanted to follow a different process. And, and so several months ago, uh, I sat down with Lamar Alexander, the chairman of the health committee, uh, and he's a longtime Senate veteran. And the two of us together talked about how do we get this done in the Senate? How do we actually get it accomplished and achieve the result we need? Uh, we brought together a group of six senators, Lamar Alexander and myself, Mike Lee, Rob Portman, Corey Gardner, and Tom Cott. Uh, and that group of six was designed to be to really cover the ideological spectrum of the Republican conference, to have strong conservatives and significantly more moderate senators, to have geographic diversity, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but but, but also to have senators who who are smart and willing to roll up their sleeves and work and understand the details of Obamacare. And and we began meeting once a week uh, in my office, uh, trying to see if we could come together, trying to see if we could agree. And my view was if those six senators could get on the same page, we would likely have a bill that could command the support of a majority of the conference. Uh, We met for over a month. The discussions were productive. I think there's real common ground. One of the best signs was there were no leaks, uh, which in Washington, (laughs) frankly, is weird. (laughs) That's incredible. That that, that is absolutely incredible. That's an achievement in and of itself. Look, I got about 30 seconds left, Senator, and I, I couldn't let you go without commenting on this. It was revealed that the previous administration violated Americans' Fourth Amendment rights for years, systematically for years. There was a subpoena put out by Devin Nunez yesterday to unmask the unmaskers here. Uh, We talked to Congressman Michael McCall and said, will you commit, sir, uh, to bringing to justice those in the previous administration who violated Americans' Fourth Amendment rights? Senator Cruz, will you make that same commitment, sir? Uh, Absolutely, and I I think it it, it is very concerning uh, the willingness of the Obama administration to violate the privacy rights and, and the Fourth Amendment rights of American citizens. I think it is every bit as concerning that they that it appears that they use the intelligence and national security apparatus for partisan purposes to target Republicans, to target incoming members of the Trump administration. We need to have full accountability. We need to understand who did what. And I think that's critical for both the Senate and the House to take the lead on on, on making sure that the truth comes out and, and that those who violated the law are held accountable. 